Hey everybody, welcome back to Suck Less Saturday. I am your host, Neil, here again one more time with the CEO, Stephanie Widener, uh, also my beautiful bride, so... Uh, married to this guy. Yeah. I am married to someone at the company. It's true. It's, it's you. It's true. It's true. <laughs> John's married as well, but not to either of us. Um, <laughs> And I, I, we're both thankful for that, right? Yes, we're all thankful for that. <laughs> I love John like a brother. That's it. All right. So, uh, hey, we are going to talk about some stuff about uh, dry fire to suck less this week. And um, I think we're going to get back to basics a little bit. You need a shot timer because that which gets measured gets worked on. The Range Tech Timer is the official timer of active self-protection because it is versatile, reliable, feature-rich, and very economical. Check out all it can do at the link below. Talking about basics in dry fire, we've talked the last couple of weeks about uh, the, the safety rules. We've talked about setting up a safe dry fire dojo, looking at your process by which you go in and out of dry fire so that you can do this as safely as possible and get the most uh, bang for your buck without a bang, right? And hey, how does that? <laughs> right? It's a dad yeah. joke. <laughs> yep. Got to print a new t-shirt. Uh, anyway, um, mm -hmm. This week, I want to talk about something, and this has really been on my mind a lot lately in the time that I've spent it, uh, at the ranges recently, the time that I've, uh, you know, some, some online time, it's been a topic of people getting in and out of the holster safely. Mm -hmm. And so I want to talk about that portion. Now, dry fire is not just click, reset, click, reset, click. That's not dry fire. That, that's part of dry fire. And that's a big part of dry fire. You've got to learn your trigger. You've got to be able to hold the gun still. You've got to get your grip and all that stuff. But really where a lot of folks are focusing recently in dry fire is getting out of the holster to get to target kind of quickly and accurately. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of problems that a, a one second draw to first shot don't solve, right? Now, I'm, don't hear me say you have to have a sub-second draw. That's not the point of all of this. The point of all of this is the quicker you're on target, the more quickly you can deal with a threat, mm -hmm. right? And so not every threat means I have to have a sub-second draw and I'm not right. even gonna, I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole. That rabbit hole has a, enough people in there arguing, I'm not gonna get into it. All I know is that the faster I get my gun out and accurate, the more, the, the sooner I can go to work and do what I gotta do if it's a bad day. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I've got a sub-second in dry fire, chances are I've got a second, second and a half in live fire on a bad day, still gives me uh, a, a better chance, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, it, you know, and, and if you look at any other, you know, you know, anything in the athletics world, if you look at, uh, you know, Tom Brady, who I am not a fan of Tom Brady, but he lets go of the ball pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that the coaches are like, why do you have to let go of the ball so quick? Mm -hmm. Jeepers, that's just silly. No, it's not. The, the, these are the kind of things that we myelinate and we work on it in his profession. He's one of the best. And we can get to the speed point at some uh, some juncture, but today we want to be back on those basics yeah. and talking about safety because we've noticed everyone is so focused on the speed and that is an important skill. It is. That's not to deny that, but watching videos of not just amateurs, but even professionals, yeah. um, we're noticing, and, and we even will notice it ourselves in classes, that sometimes your skill fluctuates a little bit, your, your attention fades and, and you're not as deliberate and careful yeah. with your reholsters you need to be. And that is is a recipe for disaster, particularly for holstering your gun. Yep. Now there's and and again, it's all about perspective uh, and it's all about context. If you're a law enforcement person, you probably can't always look your gun into holster, but you're also carrying that thing out here in a bucket where you you're less likely to point at yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're carrying appendix or even strong side, we see people point guns at themselves all the time, mm -hmm. uh, and that's where bad things happen. And bad things happen way more going into the holster than coming out of the holster. But we're going to teach it coming out of the holster first, mm -hmm. uh, just so that uh, we can start there. Yeah. I have a holstered up gun here that has been cleared, but just to be on the safe side, I've got my barrel block in there. Um, I don't even have a mag in it right now, uh, but this is what You know, and then do. people always say they would not would ever carry appendix just because they don't ever want to be pointing a gun at their junk. But if it's, if it's in the holster, it's not being pointed. But as you're drawing and doing things, you're yeah. starting to point it. However, I promise you that pointing it at your side like this through all of this yep. is no better. It's just as dangerous, just as fatal. Um, potentially more so, there's so many bad things right through there. So you are not off the hook strong side. In fact, I see much more dangerous uh, reholsters or holsters, however you want to say it. I know that's a big thing yeah, right now too, yep, yep. Uh, with strong side carriers because they can't see what they're doing. They've lost a lot of the mobility in their shoulder gear. So they're kind of pointing and fishing and not realizing what they're doing. Yep. Um, so 
strong side carriers, you are not off the hook here. So after watching this, we thought we are like the highly trained athletes going to go back to basics. And uh, Neil, if you want to demonstrate how to safely. Yeah. So the first thing to come out of the holster <clears throat> and, and we'll do a Penix and then I can kind of I, I can show you what uh, the strong side looks like as well. Uh, but the big thing is there's a lot of different places that you can start, uh, you know, sometimes in uh, different uh, shooting competitions, they have to start with their hands on the bill of their hat or above their shoulders or at a, you know, at a, uh, I'm sorry, uh, or, or anything, you know, different places. There's lots of different places to start. So I'd recommend that you train in a few different ways because you just don't know on your day where your hands are going to be. Um, I am a big fan of the fig leaf or the cheater grip, which means that I've got a hold of my shirt. Uh, you see me stand like this all the time. Right now, if I really want to get fast, I, I get my feet into it and all that other kind of stuff, but that's for a whole nother time. But uh, for the purposes of this, what really what I want to talk about is clearing a cover garment, getting a grip on your gun and getting it out. So I don't care where your hands start, but the few things to really think about is north to south with your uh, support hand. So north to south means up and down versus east and west. So if I grab the gun like this, what happens to the back of my shirt is everything gets bunched up and tight. And as I go to clear it, uh, I'm gonna get stuck. And if I'm a strong side person, I'm really gonna get stuck over here because I'm not gonna be able to get a gun out. And if I'm a appendix person, I've gotta clear to about my chin to be able to get my hand on my gun. So if I go, north to south with my fingers down. Belly button is a great place to, to, to think about grabbing because I can touch my belly button without thinking about it. I don't have to look at it. My body knows where my belly button is and I can go. Now, um, I, some folks use the trigger finger. I like the middle finger just because that's just that's natural to me. Again, this is all stuff that you get to do you and it's not about which hand to use, it's about the technique. So the technique is we clear the, gun, the, we clear the cover garment, get a good grip here and get a good uh, upward motion. Uh, I like to break my wrist right here because that helps a little bit in a minute. Uh, and at the same time, I'm moving this hand down to the gun. I'm getting what we call the claw grip. Now, Scott Jodolinski taught me this and I love it. I, I think this is, I don't know that he invented this, but he taught me it. So I'm giving him credit right now. So I get my thumb over the back plate of the gun. Some folks like to come around to the side. That's completely okay. Uh, if you're new to this, you may want to drive in and get a full firing grip on the gun while it's in the holster, but consider uh, your trigger finger stays straight. So uh, I'm going to go back to the claw. So as I come out, uh, the gun gets jerked out and I already am going towards my target. Now my target for this, uh, drill here that I'm doing is over here in the corner of our basement. Uh, but then I just let go of the shirt. I marry up, I press out, I pull my trigger and that's what I do. Okay. So now in dry fire, I'm going to reset the trigger uh, and go back to the holster. Now this is where it gets uh, a bad. And this is what we see on video. We've seen it from a lot of folks is, okay, I did my thing and I either went really fast and did a great job. Now I'm a stud or I went really fast and I sucked or I went too slow and I, and whatever. And then what we see is they come back and they slam the, the gun back in and it's either an exclamation point on a great job and a job well done, or it's a, I suck and, and that, and that's when bad stuff has a chance to happen. So what we teach, and this is for your everyday uh, self defender, and this is not for policemen or that kind of thing, uh, because I, I get it, you know, um, there might still be a threat. Don't take your, if there's still a threat, don't put your gun away. How about that? All right. But if you're going to, put your gun away. The first thing that I do is I put my, I, I take a breath after I shoot <sighs> that basically divorces my speed and draw and shooting to getting back into the holster. Right. I want to, I want something to mentally break that, uh, you know, cause I'm coming out kind of quick in, in a lot of cases. Uh, but I want to break off that and go, okay, now it's time to be, I'm going to do something administrative. I want to be slow, steady uh, and concise with that. So I take my breath and I put my thumb back over the back. That gives, if you're a hammer fire gun person, putting your thumb over the back is an added level of safety. Uh, if you've got a Glock and you don't have a striker control device, consider getting one. Uh, that's added safety for me with this. It, it just basically is a mental reminder that I'm not shooting now, okay? Uh, finger is high and in register and I come back and I touch my thumb to my pec muscle, thumb pectoral. I think that's a Craig Douglas thing. I wanna make sure I'm giving the right people credit for this stuff, but uh, you know, I've taken a lot of classes. 
classes over the years. Uh, so at this point, now I'm gonna clear my cover garment back to basically where it was when I drew. I'm getting it out of the way. Um, and then I'm gonna chicken wing up. Now we always talk about don't move your elbow when you're drawing, but if I chicken wing up and I call this going gangster, I turn this thing kind of a gangster way. So now I, it's hard for me to point it any other direction. And if, if you're I- You're on a line together in a class yeah, or I, you're I can't at home, point it's it, yeah. very, very difficult. Well, and so what we see a lot of times, now Steph is a foot behind me here. Yeah. So what and we see a lot of times is they come back to here and then they go like this into the holster. And everybody down there is probably puckering up just a little bit because that's a nerve wracking moment. Yep. If you wanna keep people from puckering up and thinking you're that guy, just do this. And now you're gone. All you gotta do is break that wrist down. So now I kick my hips back out. I get my fat belly out of the way and then I tap the gun on the outside of the holster just so I recognize that. I look in, I visually inspect, slowly, reluctantly back into the holster. I hear it click, I'm in, it's good. Holster, the gun's not pointing at anything anymore because it's in the holster. And at no point did you point that gun at any part of your body no. through that reholster. And frankly, uh, because I've got this barrel block on there, if I did, I would feel it, mm -hmm. right? Because that's going to come out. That's going to leave. A, that's going to hurt a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I do this, I'm coming back again, up and in. Now I had to go up just a little higher than normal because of the barrel block, right. but really that's not a bad habit to get into. Now, one thing that I tell folks on the range when we do this, if you feel any backwards pressure, if there's anything in there, it's gonna give you a little pressure, you stop and you come right back out to the safe mode. So, so if I get to here and I feel pressure, and I'm like, oh, man, you know, and maybe I'm wearing a heavy coat. Maybe I didn't really get a good look at this thing and I feel some pressure. Nope, stop. And it comes right back out and it's aimed at basically the, the base of the target out there in a safe direction. I keep my elbow up in any class that I've ever been at. Um, somebody will say, are the guns in the holster or some degree of that? If you say no, it's not, it's not time to get screamed at. It's right. like, oh, okay, get your stuff straight. And in some cases, and this has happened to me a lot, if you mm -hmm. go take a class where you have to shoot 500 rounds in a day, this undershirt's gonna come untucked mm -hmm. at some point. All the and time. Okay, cool. Well, now I can hold my, sh my up shirt, uh, check it. over shirt. I can check that. I can make sure there's no strings on my coat that's stuck in there uh, that I forgot to cut off because if you got strings on your coat, cut them off. Uh, and I can do all of that again and safely back in. I hear that audible snap and I'm back in the holster. And one thing that we do in a lot of our classes, we do what we call the walk down drill, which is where we spend a couple hours of focused time doing the same thing over and over again to build that efficiency, to build that myelination and to get that process as efficient and uh, streamlined as possible and have your brain do it automatically. The, the thing that a lot of people don't think about is when you're in a class where you're shooting 500 rounds, you've reholstered 500 times and you can kind of start to get some inattention there. Yeah. And that's, well, nothing happened those 400 times and we're in a hurry and things are going well and, and you're just not thinking about it. And all of a sudden you're starting to myelinate that process yeah. where it's a fast, aggressive reholster. Um, and that can be a problem. I mean, like it's exact the undershirt thing is what I see all the time. Those bunch up or regular shirts bunch up and, and they will start to get caught in that holster. And that is again, a recipe for disaster. You still should not be pointing the gun at you. Yeah. Uh, so again, it's that redundancy that you're talking about. And it is possible to holster an appendix holster, a strong side holster without ever pointing a gun at your body. Yeah. Um, so you should also be doing that. But again, the redundancy, if there's any resistance, any problems, stop. And you can only do that if you're moving deliberately, thoughtfully, right. slowly. You, as a defender, if you've looked your gun into your holster, made sure it's clear, there's no, especially an outside the waistband holster, there's no spent brass in there from your neighbors or anything. All of these things have happened and happen with some regularity. So so visually inspect that that is, that is empty and, and deliberately reholster. And uh, you'll yeah. really save yourself so, a lot of grief and violate yeah. that process properly. So let me grab the cert and I will kind of show what it looks like strong side a little bit. Okay. Oh, this is the cert pistol. It's got the plastic in there. This thing, you cannot put any ammo in this whatsoever. Shoots a little laser out the end of it. So this is a great training tool. Mm -hmm. uh, these work great in classes, uh, much like a blue gun or a piece of plastic. I know uh, a lot of folks um, have some uh, rules about where they point these things. Again, we still are gonna treat this like a regular gun. I'm not gonna menace folks with it, but in a training class, um, if I've got a piece of plastic or a cert pistol, I can show things that I can't. I absolutely would never show 
show with a real gun, mm -hmm. uh, with a live gun. So in this case, I'm going to use this. Now, uh, let's assume that I've got a gun on my strong side right here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now to do the same thing, the same thing, instead of my cheater grip being right here, uh, and, and fig leaf. Now I'm going to come over here just a little bit and I'm going to kind of cross my arms even a little bit. But as I go, I'm bringing the shirt up almost in a C shape because the gun is sitting right here and I've got to clear the back of that grip right there with my shirt. What we see a lot of times is folks catch their, their shirt on the grip and then they come out like this and that's a bit of a problem, right? So we really wanna clear that thing kind of aggressively. Again, we can get a hold of it in the uh, claw grip as such. Uh, when we draw the gun, it's basically snap it out of there with our bicep. I don't wanna lift it with the shoulder. I know a lot of, if you're a little bit smaller of stature, you may have to use a little bit of shoulder, but as little shoulders you can. We wanna come out of there with the bicep and and then snap that thing forward and we just drive it to the target. We do our pew, 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 all of the stuff that we're gonna do. Now it's time to take a breath. <sighs> okay, I put my thumb over the back. That's my personal indicator, the breath and the thumb over the back that I'm done with the shooting and now I'm gonna get administrative and I'm gonna do it safely. So I come back here, I get back into that thumb pectoral. If the gun is touch, if the thumb is on the back of the gun and is touching my body, it's really hard to point this thing at myself unless I stick my leg out. I have to try to point this thing at myself, okay? So if I'm touching this thing to my body, now I know that it's gonna be very difficult to point that gun at myself. I clear the cover garment again. Um, I, I like, uh, I think it's Tim Grover says, it's time to get fancy. Uh, and maybe Adam Winch says that too, but kick your hips out just a little bit so that you're, so that when we come down, we can keep the gun right on our body, tap the outside of our shoulder or our, our holster, and then up and right back down in, you get the audible click. When you got the click, you're back in the holster and everything is good. Okay. Now, one caveat to all of this that I learned last year uh, at a class that uh, we were invited to teach at, everybody showed up with their guns in outside the waistband holsters. Mm -hmm. Thumb pectoral is not the way to go if you're in an outside uh, the waistband holster. Uh, an offset, yeah. Yeah, an offset. offset if the, if the, the holster belt. has the gun sitting out from your body like this, as, if you come back and you're touching your thumb to your body, right. and then you try to tap it on the outside, everybody over here's legs mm -hmm. are, are, are in your line of fire mm -hmm. uh, or downrange from you. So if you're carrying outside the waistband and, and you're offset just a little bit, you just come back to here. Uh, I almost touch the palm of my hand and my body, and then I just rock it down and in. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the difference there, and that's the one caveat to all of that. Uh, the thumb pectoral is amazing if you're a concealed carrier, and I highly recommend it. I, uh, I do that. You don't have to go gangster when you're going strong side or anything like that, but with just a little bit of work, you can get back into the holster safety or safely, and you can avoid any risk. Assignment time. Are Let's you ready? Do an assignment. Okay. <laughs> what I want you to do is I want you to do 10 draws from your holster and, and put it back in your holster 10 times, deliberately, thoughtfully, as well as you can, and then do 10 more at a reasonable speed. I want one of two conditions then. I either want someone that knows what they're doing, watching you, and offering feedback to making sure that you are doing these fundamentals as well as you can. Mm -hmm. um, or videotape yourself and watch it yourself and look for those things or you can post it in the group and we'll try to help break that down. Um, I don't know any high level athletes that don't film themselves and watch because we it's very difficult. Your body starts to do other things when you're not realizing it. When you yep. see it, you're like, oh, I didn't even realize I was doing that. That shoulder thing snuck in on me again. That's the mm. one I always notice. Yep. Um, so then you can work on that for a while. So I want you to do it 10 times really practicing the things that Neil went over with you slowly, deliberately, making sure that your process is efficient and, and safe and deliberate, and then 10 times at some speed and, and then break down your process. Make sure it is number one, safe, the entire process. You're never pointing a gun at yourself at any point in this. Uh, and then also where are some big movement, big inefficiencies that we can start to work on over the next yep. couple of weeks? So there's so if you're gonna videotape yourself, a great place that you can get some feedback is in the Ask Dry Fire Challenge yep. group. Mm -hmm. um, people will not make fun of you. We don't allow any of that um, when the, if that happens. And it has a couple of times over the couple of years. We do, I jump all over that. Uh, so you can know that you can safely share a video of yourself doing this and you're gonna get good feedback from there are some high end shooters in there. Uh, that's one. Uh, two, uh, when she says at speed, it's at your speed. Yes, yes. Not my speed, not 
Gabe White's speed, mm -hmm. your speed. If your draw to first shot is two seconds, then that's fine. That's your speed. The first 10 should probably be three to four seconds. The second 10 should be at your two speed or your two second draw to first shot. Yep. You, we can always work down. We've got more weeks and we've got a lot of sucking yep. lessons. And at we this can week, do, right? I wouldn't even worry about the timer. Just do it yeah, more, no, I, I, more than slow is what I'm thinking this week. Do right. it, like you say, as uh, quickly as yeah. you safely can do it without making yeah, any I, mistakes. I wouldn't want to introduce a timer there. I would just want you to to consciously think through that, that, oh, I, now when she said speed, I go go as fast as I can. No, yeah. it's not as fast as you can. It's just get out and, and let your hands move a little bit. Feel your speed, where mm -hmm. you're at there. Uh, we'll introduce a timer later on and you'll suck less, I promise you. But start there, do some video. You'll see a lot of movement, um, maybe. Um, and if you don't, then you'll see a little bit of movement and you'll already know what you need to work on. So thanks for joining us for Suck Less this week. Thanks for doing this with me again. This is super <laughs> fun. Uh, we got more coming. We'll see you next week. Have a good one.